Hi, my name is Tim Leahy, and today we're going to talk about the HIV life cycle and the drug classes we use to treat people with HIV that are based on that knowledge. Today, by the end of the seven minute video, you're going to be singing like a church choir these steps of receptor binding, co receptor binding, all the way down the list. And also, you'll have a sense of what, uh, which of those steps we've been able to develop drug classes again. So, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited. Look at the lovely surface of the T cell. Regard the CD4 and CCR5 molecules, and then look higher and see the Avenger floating down from above. You see, there's this HIV, and it's come to play. These little proteinaceous spikes here, the yellow thingies on the edge of the HIV, they actually like to touch CD4. Preferentially, they bind to it as the primary receptor. They also like to bind with CCR5, and that's called a co-receptor. And, and through those molecules, HIV establishes a foothold on the edge of the cell, and you'll see soon how it gets itself on the inside and begins its trickery. Now what? Well, now that HIV is bound to the cell, it, it, it wants to get it wants to get evil. So what it does is it binds to the cells, and much like um, a spermatocyte will actually, or spermatozoa will actually penetrate a, an ovocyte, HIV uses a proteinaceous spike to poke its way through the, the membrane. And then it sort of transitions from being on the outside of the cell to being on the inside of the cell. And at that point, it sort of opens up, it sort of re opens up its shell and it regurgitates the contents of its inside. It's, and most importantly, that is it regurgitates RNA right inside of the cell. Is that polite? I don't think so. So what happens? Now you have this viral RNA in the host cell. And what, you know, there's this, this devious enzyme called reverse transcriptase, so named because it does things backwards from the usual dogma, that translates this uh, viral RNA into something that looks a lot more like self. It turns it into DNA. DNA that can be stored in your genome. I know. I know. Come with me to the nucleus, where your DNA, you, reside. And suddenly now we have some newly made viral DNA just hanging out in the cytosol, after which, you know, partly through passive uh, transfusion and partly through active mechanism, that, that DNA has a way it's finding itself into your DNA. And then things really get crazy, because we have the viral integrase enzyme, which is there just to make exactly the kind of thing, I know, I know it's going to make it hard for you to sleep, but that viral DNA might be here, and it might be here, just sitting in your genome forever. What have we learned so far? Well, HIV likes to select T cells by their surface expression of CD4. That's a 4. And then it also likes to bind to the co-receptor, and typically that's this co-receptor called CCR5. This makes it so that you get helper T cells and activated memory helper T cells. Fusion happens as that proteinaceous spikes gets HIV through the membrane and into the cytosol, after which you get transcription of the RNA into DNA, so it looks more like self, and then that DNA, when it gets into the nucleus near your host DNA, gets incorporated into the genome. So HIV is essentially, at that point, part of self. All right, let me walk you through the next step. You know, here uh, below we have a uh, you know a cell, and I'm sure you recognize uh, you know the, from your uh, electron micrograph work that this is the nucleus. And you know now that you have this DNA from the virus integrated into the genome, now the natural host processes just take over, and you you, know, you have transcription and and you know uh, we have translation, and, and you know this is the Golgi of course, and the ultimate result there is HIV proteins, but not just any HIV proteins. What what you have is sort of a polyprotein here. This is it's kind of analogous to pro opio melanocortinin, a POMC. It's a polyprotein that needs to be cleaved in order to, to function. HIV's answer to this is, is a, another Pac-Man, the HIV protease. And this thing cleaves this big sucker up into lots of little pieces. And right here. And, and I, I tried to write down what they were, but uh, I completely can't. And, and so I'm going to add that on in the video later. And so it's going to look awesome. But anyways, these proteins are reverse transcriptase and protease and structure of proteins, a whole, a whole bunch of cool things. All right, so you have these polyproteins in the cytosol, and now all HIV needs to do is to assemble itself. And, uh, and then it can go out and do some more nastiness. So what happens is that these HIV polyproteins sort of get together and they create a viral particle, uh, details omitted. But, but this viral particle is unsatisfied. It says, but wait, something's 
missing. Something's not right. What is that? Well, it turns out that it wants a little extra camouflage. It wants to be able to go out into the world sneakily, and it goes out to the plasma membrane and it says, how could I possibly cloak myself in this immunologically fierce land I found myself in, the human body? How could I possibly get out of the cell and not be recognized? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it cloaks itself in a little bit of plasma membrane, a little bit of that bilayer from the outside of the cell. It, it actually sort of buds out of the cell and thereby is mostly cloaked in humanity. It's, if you know about the story of uh, uh, the Odyssey and, and how they visited Polyphemus and hid um, underneath those sheep, well then, you know what I'm talking about. So how do we turn these steps in the HIV life cycle into you know, something our patients can benefit from? Well, it turns out we do it pretty well. The, we've got a bunch of different classes of HIV drugs called antiretroviral drugs, and they save lives. It's been one of the major public health successes of the last few years, or actually the last century. So you know, we don't have any drugs that address receptor binding, but we do have CCR5 antagonists that uh, uh, block co-receptor binding. And uh, we can talk in class about how, how that was discovered. It's kind of a cool story about epidemiology meets basic science meets patients' lives saved. We have two classes of drugs that uh, um, pre prevent uh, uh, reverse transcription from happening. We have the um, nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, and we also have the non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Integration, we got that beat. We have the integrase strand transfer inhibitors. Do I get points for being able to do this at the same time, typing and talking? I hope so. Um, transcription and translation. Um, that would kill people, so we won't do that. Proteolysis, though, we got covered. We have protease inhibitors. And then packaging and maturation has been something that a lot of drug companies are developing, and, uh, you know, give it time. We'll be there. So here's the HIV life cycle in one swell foop. Look at it. It is glorious. So, you know, we, I took you through each of these, uh, these steps. These are not just abstract things. These are the things that lead to drug development, which leads to lives saved. It's not the end of the epidemic, but it's a major accomplishment, and it's a beginning of the end. So I look forward to seeing you in other sessions, but uh, I hope it was as much fun for you as it was for me, because it was a lot of fun.